So I put together this sh uh, a sheet, and can I borrow yours for a second? So uh, uh, one of the sheets looks like this. And on the front page, it says go to the site. So it has the login for the site. And then it says enter the given information. And there's a little sticker. So the users are like guest dash 000 something and then a password so that you can log into, uh, oh, excuse me. You can log into the site. And then once you're there, uh, so you can log into the Moodle site. Oh, I need one more screen. I got the feedback sheet right here that I'm giving away. Oh, it might be on here. OK. Yeah, so to show you works for uh, giving the information. And then, maybe I don't have the page here. It's probably on the other. Then you click on your guest number. Demonstration nope. Just click on where it says Workflow Visualization System Demonstration Site. I did need one more slide. We've got instructions, too, on the, um, the other handout. Yeah, there's another handout that's a little newer. It's got the instructions. OK, then it says Site. And as you look down there, there's a link that says Open Workflow Visualization. I should be doing this as I'm Okay, now I got to that one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even have a, I can't even remember my login. So here's what I want you to be able to do. Hopefully, nobody's running too far here. This goes back to the screen. So open the workflow visualization. So you can go up here to this section that says WVS demo, and you can add a unit. And so I want each person to do that. And when you do, it says new unit up here. And you can highlight this. And then what I want you to do is put in your guest, and whatever your number is, guest 0001 and then sandbox or something. So you create, everybody creates their own unit that they can play in. Because if you jump on somebody else's unit and we have two people in the same place, space trying to move in the same time, and I don't know if people do that. Let's see. <laughs> we don't know if we can get this many people to do this. We'll get feedback. Everybody go to the same one. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you just repeat what you want us to do again? I'm sorry, it took me a second. Okay, are we on this screen right here? Yes, yeah. but my, the right doesn't look like that. No, mine doesn't either because it's, it's, it says theories of learning. Drop down. Just click on the drop down. Oh, the, the units? New unit? Yeah. yeah okay. Drop down. So do you have, uh, you see this part right here? Yep. Where it says demo, click there. Oh. See where it says add unit? Oh. Click add unit and then you'll get new unit. Then highlight new unit and then just put in your, uh, your guest name sandbox. You can put in anything, any old unique name. Because what we want to do is just have everybody have their own individual okay. workspaces. Yeah. So when I came back, when I clicked on that drop-down, there was like four new units, probably because people had opened some and then it was like, yeah. just take the bottom. Or just create a new one. I'll just be a bottom. What are you doing that? Yeah. So I, don't, I don't think they just. <laughs> yeah. It's not too mobile. Not yet. Yeah, it doesn't take you to the iPad does much. Like, I've been working on it since uh, I was Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so if something doesn't work, that's the guy. It's his fault. Okay, on an iPad, forget it. No, no, no. Okay, so then once you create your own sandbox, you can hit Add Topic, and this will say, uh, please select the section, this workflow. So there's a demonstration Moodle lesson. It's, there's actually three lessons. Behavioral learning, information processing, social cognitive theory. Uh, and these all have data associated to them. Okay? So they have uh, eight students, and, and, and there's data for all of these. 
So you choose any one of these, like information processing, and you close this down. And then what you have is a sandbox with a lesson in there that's associated to the Moodle lesson, lesson information processing. So what this means is if I go over here to this original uh, demonstration lesson, you'll see here's the behavioral learning theory, theory. Uh, here is information processing le uh, uh, lesson. And it has a lecture, it has a pause and reflect, which is a drop box uh, with assignments. It has a discussion and it has a quiz. So when I go back to uh, my visualization of this, if I look at the resources, uh, there are objectives, there's the pause and reflect, this is the uh, discussion folder, and there's the quiz, and there's the PowerPoint lecture. So uh, when I drag, I can drag an icon out here, and each one of these icons is associated with a certain type of uh, activity, and it was, uh, it was, hours and hours and hours to come up with these names that I don't really like all that much. So that's the value of compromise is you end up with a solution that nobody likes. <laughs> so uh, the good news is, is though when you drag these out here, you can actually go down into this box. Every time you drag an icon, this box down here tells you what the active icon is. And I can actually go down in here and change it to uh, what I want. Okay. So I can do that, and then when I go to the resources, uh, basically, like I said, it's a drag and drop tool. So if I want to put the PowerPoint up there, I can, I, I, uh, if it doesn't go when you drag it there, you can just throw it in the resource box. And now this uh, icon here is always associated with, or this resource is always associated with this icon. Of course, if you make a mistake, you can right click or whatever the Mac version is. Uh, I can't right click, but you uh, left click, you can delete stuff. Uh, same thing up here, you can right click, you can delete, you can also annotate. So if I want to say, uh, this is the demo lesson, save it, then it shows up here as an annotation. I can also add annotations for whatever the active icon is. I can click over here and add them. Uh, so I can do this. Alan, I have a question. Yep. Do these are these annotations visible to the students? Do the students see any of this stuff? No, students can't even see the workflows. Okay, not at this point. They're not set up that way. So this is simply for you to connect it to uh, something in the lesson, so that you can go back and analyze <coughs> which students access that portion of the lesson, right. how much time they spent on it, um, show you exactly what happened with that. PowerPoint or that sure. quiz. Right. So if I, uh, yeah, so for example, if I go to this resource, which was the PowerPoint, uh, and I click and I do reports, there are uh, three types of reports that can show up. Timeline. Timelines are usually best used with uh, interaction type of data, like uh, discussions. Uh, but so I can make a graph, and this graph would show me. Uh, students and how many times, they, in this case, it would show me how many times they visited this data. Again, we put a limited amount of, of uh, information that you can access here, uh, but everything that you're talking about, uh, in terms of every piece of data that the system collects, which are things like uh, when did they access it, how long did they spend there, how many times did they access it, who did they interact with, all that type of data, uh, the sky's the limit. Uh, and I could show you more of that if I, would pay Doug $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> and the 2L lessons have to data. What's that? And the 2L lessons have to data. That's yeah. one of the places that it, do, it varies a little between the two LMSs on what they collect. Yeah. What would, I'm sorry, I didn't. About what, D2L? One of the places the tool will look slightly different if you look in the D2L version compared to the Moodle version is the two LMSs collect slightly different nuances of data. So what we have available to us is slightly different. but. Broad st strokes, the vast majority of it is the same. Where do you access an on D2L? You would you have to <coughs> you know, come back to me, because I'm the campus liaison for okay. learning analytics. So if this is something you're interested in doing, Okay. Back. Yep. We have to set it up. Class okay. Class. Gotcha. Yeah. Other question? I'm just wondering if you tested it in Canvas. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> there are hopes. 
Okay. There are hopes, yeah. but there's nothing more than hopes at this point. Okay. Yeah. Part is if you say, oh, this looks like it has some promise, this would be cool if we were in campus, that would that would uh, ratchet up my enthusiasm a little bit. It's not that I'm not enthusiastic about the tool, and Kim and I have this discussion. Uh, it, it's not that I'm not enthusiastic about it, it's just that I am a, uh, I am a fourth year university assistant professor who's, uh, it's teaching down in the colleges where uh, about 70% of what we do is based on our classroom teaching. And I just got a lot of stuff, just like everybody else. And, and so it's not my primary focus, but if I thought people were, there are times when I stop and I think about it, and I think, wow, this would be really cool uh, if I could do this and this and this and this sort of thing. And then I think, oh, I got the script straight, I got to get this lesson ready, I got this, I got the faculty meeting, I got this blah, 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 like we all know I feel. But if, uh, if, if people say, oh, I have some enthusiasm, I'd use it if, you, if it would do this, this is part of it. In fact, I have a handout that I'll give you that says, here's what I think of it right off the bat, here's what you should really change right off the bat. Here's what I would really like it to be able to do. You know, and we could have moved forward on this. Part of the reason that we stopped here was because, because I'm just one person, you know, and I just have one set of ideas, and I'd like to get more people's ideas as they as they get around the table and, and, and so on and so forth. So, so that was kind of the value of you getting a chance to, to sit and play with this. So uh, so uh, go ahead. So it had Basically, design features were things that I thought, these are things that instructors do that aren't, uh, that they do for the lesson that uh, don't necessarily uh, mean student interaction. So, uh, like this is our lesson goals. Sometimes we have focus elements where we tell a story that, that uh, you know, we give some kind of metaphorical story that gets people set or that constrains the lesson in particular ways. Uh, so things like this, teacher lecture, uh, these particular elements are branching elements, and I would need to, if I go, uh, so branching elements, ooh, don't look like that. Oh, oh boy. People go in here and start dragging stuff around. Oh, there we go. A branching element looks like this, and basically a branching element just means that uh, uh, sometimes we have people do multiple stuff. We give them three articles to read. We watch a video and do these articles. We go to this website and so forth. And sometimes it doesn't matter to us what order they do it in, and sometimes it does. And so branching elements just tell you that. Uh, so it just tells you, for example, in this lesson, you have these two activities, which is a student reflection and a discussion. And it doesn't matter uh, which one you do first or you do these simultaneously. Something on the back side says you can move forward and you can do other stuff before you complete these. So those are just elements, uh, just specific workflow elements that uh, you don't necessarily have to use. They just give you more detail about how you thought the lesson should flow itself. So if you have a very specific way that you want people to uh, to access the data and do the activities, uh, then you'll want a more specific workflow. If you don't, you can just throw a bunch of circles up there and associate data to them. And that, uh, the beauty of the tool that is the ability to, you have some level of organization and you can go in and look at things according to the way that you want to look at them, the way you understand them. Uh, so depending on uh, how you're thinking about the importance of order in the lesson depends on what your uh, what your workflow or your visualization is going to look like. Order doesn't matter, just throw some stuff up there, associate some data, and then go get it. Ultimately, what you want to be able to do is look at it and say, okay, I know where that data is, because if you don't know where it is, then it's probably not working. So. so, Alan, would it be safe to say that there are a range of ways that you could use, I mean, from something as, as complex as literally trying to map out all of your different topics to something as simple as here's five activities that I want to quickly be able to scan and see who has completed it or not. So I'm just going to throw a couple resources in an icon and then yep. I can quickly run that report. You could do that. Yep. You throw, or like I mentioned earlier, you could just throw one icon and, and throw nine, twelve resources on that one icon. It's just a matter of being able to understand your own logic for your own, your own design your own visualization. Yes. And then could you speak to a little bit about the different levels of reports? Because you can run them, reports on single resources, you can run reports on topics and on units and whatnot, right? Yeah. Uh, first, let me, uh, let, me uh, uh, let me talk about the, the 
course. Three different types of levels here. So on a discussion, here's a discussion activity. We'll see how this looks. Uh, if I generate a timeline, and, and so here's another issue that we have is that the timeline uh, uh, the, is a little bit big. But a timeline basically would say, okay, student one, this should actually be a little smaller in terms of the graphics, and you would be able to see it a little bit better. But on you know, May 19, uh, student one generated a, a, a part of a discussion. In fact, actually, if you mouse over uh, this icon, it'll tell you exactly May 19, uh, 10.41 p.m., student one, this is what they said in a discussion. And this is in the discussion forum in Moodle. Right, so if I go back to, uh, yeah, so if I go back here, here's the connection. Information processing, here was the discussion here. In the workflow vision, uh, workflow it shows up here. As a report, I can generate this timeline. And here's what the student wrote initially. And then it connects, uh, if I follow that line, again, this is why size matters. Uh, these are replies that people made to the report. So I could follow, if this were a condensed version, this is one of the things that I would write down. Graph is too big. In fact, I've already heard you say that. Uh, graph is too big. Can we make it smaller? Can we make it more manageable? Yep, give me $10,000 and I can make it more manageable. <laughs> uh, but basically, so this allows you to connect it. So if you're interested in how people participate in the discussion and, and who's connecting to who, <laughs> who's following up and stuff like that. It's useful for, for that. If you want to see if there's, a, if you want to follow a discussion and find out if there's uh, actually some value in the things that people are saying, uh, then you can <laughs> use this to do that. Another type of, uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yes, no. So another type of report is, uh, so graph. And this graph data, so this is an exam, and here you can see how many could. Uh, you can see how students scored on an exam, how many times they're accessing the exam, and all the way across. If anybody wants to jump in and take that exam, you're up here now. So, <laughs> so what happens when you roll over the bars there? I saw something pop up. Oh, yeah. So if you roll over the bars, it'll tell you how many times you viewed it. And uh, I should tell you their score. I don't know why this is in school. So it'll give you a score and things like that. So again, these are type of snapshot things where uh, at this level, they don't give you very much information. And, and at this point, uh, we haven't thought a great deal about, uh, uh, we've thought more, but we haven't built in the ability to uh, grab particular kinds of data. But you can, because ultimately, no matter what CMS you're in, it's sitting on top of a database. And all you really have to do is query the database any way you want. And you should be able to do that. So you should be able to say, generate multiple reports, say, for a particular student. So you can follow a student's progress across a, a number of lessons to see if you're seeing any consistencies in terms of the ways that maybe they're, when are they doing their work, what level of work are they doing. Or you might want to uh, chart a number of students and look for differences. So you might say, wow, it really does help to uh, to do this stuff early because all because what I can see in these visualiza visualizations is it looks like everybody that posts early is doing pretty well in terms of the outcomes that I was expecting. So that really is. So you can start to say, is my design any good? Uh, or you might see just the converse of that. You might see students doing particular things that don't seem helpful at all that you thought were. So ultimately, the tool gives you a way to reflect on your own lesson design. It allows you to go in and look at particular students and see how they're doing uh, over a period of time. I should say that's where we're going to, uh, is to be able to do that. But we just constructed it for the ability to be, right now, it can go and grab some data. So we know it can do it. The next question is, what mechanisms do we want to build in to do this? So this is actually great. If I, I want to take over the conversation and, and turn it to you guys and say, so what are, the, what are the things that would be useful for you? And maybe these are things that you're starting to write down in that white feedback sheet for, um, for Alan and the, and the programmers. And, and I, I hear that there's a, a, a prize for somebody who can come up with the most expensive numbers of changes <laughs> at the end of the day. You get to leave with a bagel. Um, but what sorts of ideas would, is this a useful thing? 
There's the course design side of it, which you can do actually in any sort of uh, graphic program, right? Or workflow program. But then there's the analytics side of it, where you, with the rollovers and stuff like that, someday it'll all be beautiful and pretty. Um, but was, will this be useful? And what kind of data do you want to have? Lane. I would really like to see um, more of an emphasis on just the analytics itself. I'm not certain I entirely understand the workflow part. I understand you've got to connect it somehow. But that seems to be auxiliary to the main point of the analytics. And the other thing I really want to see is layers. Because it's great to see that there is a, that these students are doing so well or not so well on a quiz, but I want to see how they're well they're doing on each question because that's where the real magic happens. Because then you can see, oh, they're really struggling with section five and these questions from that section. And if I can't see that, that doesn't. But you're saying it's so like questions within a quiz or questions. Yeah, so I, I really want to see. I want to see that, and I also want to see layers in terms of like the discussion. So it's great to see. Oh. Well, they, Johnny really does a good job, and Susie does a really good job of posting on Monday when the thing is due on Friday. But I want to see a layer of how, when they're posting vis-a-vis -vis what their grade's going to be and how long they're doing it. So I mean, I know that that can be done. It's just a matter of teasing it out and putting yeah. it together. And so the layers would be really important and drilling down a little bit more finer into the details. Also, I, I'm a little bit hazy still on how I connect a discussion to those analytics. It's like a specific discussion in Moodle to the analytics. I'm not certain exactly how that all works. And then finally, it has to be in campus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first one you said was more on the analytics. Tell, what, what do you mean by that? Well, the fr I, I see you, you have a workflow you're laying yeah, out. Okay. I, I got that on, like you said, you can spend $10,000 building that workflow of digital adjacent, or you can spend 10 cents on a big pen and a piece of paper to right. do the exact same thing. So the, the workflow thing is, is kind of superfluous to our larger goal of getting analytics. Mm -hmm. And so that I, I'm not certain that there needs to be an emphasis on that workflow, that visualization, because really, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in getting to those numbers. And, mm -hmm. and the fastest way I can do that, that kind of seems to get in my way a little bit of designing that. I want to get just to the numbers. So show me how I link my quiz to the analytics, or how I link the discussion points to the analytics, and preferably how I can drill and link multiple points together into one spreadsheet, that would be marvelous. So that's because as I'm, an instructor, you already have that meta view of what yep. the course is going to look like, yep. so you don't need that. OK, excellent. Other thoughts? Eileen, you had something. Well, <coughs> my, I, mine's a question. Um, there are some analytics, albeit very um, shallow, in D2L. And is this simply uh, a step above that to try and pull those out a little bit more and make them clear? Yeah, it's, <coughs> uh, short answer is yes. And there are analytics and, uh, but you have to wander all over the place to find them. Yeah. So this is one way to concentrate that. Okay. Okay. And, and it is a step between uh, what Lane's getting at. And, uh, and I agree with you completely. In fact, so, so uh, the roots of this for me happened about 25 years ago when I was a middle school principal and we started using uh, uh, a database program. I'm drawing a blank what it was. Uh, but we created a grade book that way because it allowed us. years ago, FileMaker had to be FileMaker. It was. It was FileMaker. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. So we used FileMaker Pro. Created a grade book. What it allowed teachers to do was take every single lesson and annotate it with standards that they were teaching to. And even activities within the lessons. Because then it allowed us to start to talk about, are we covering the standard? How are we doing it? How are students doing it? And it allowed us, of course, it was direct access to a database. And then we started to create a bunch of queries to the database. I, I think that's what I'm hearing you say. And that is the that is the next step in this process. So that's, you know, if I came back here, all that would be in place. You know, so uh, so I'm with you. That's what, that's what I'm really itching to do. So I, I, when, on the side where I say, oh, I'm really excited about this, on the side where I say, oh, I'm not so excited, is I see it the way that you see it right now. And I see what it could be and what I want it to do. But that's, I, I want to get more feedback from people like you that say that. So that yeah, other thoughts. So sorry that it's, that it's not there yet, but I agree with you completely. Anyone not really feel like this is a useful thing? Go ahead, Lisa. So I would like to see, I've talked to James about this, is knowing exactly what time and day that they made every single view of a video or, or something. 
something because um, a lot of students will come to me and try to argue for a better grade and it would be nicer to be able to get a feel for whether you know they were putting in the time in advance or whether they were watching 10 videos the night before mm -hmm. at double speed at double speed fast um, forward yeah and I think that would help <coughs> give, get a sense of like how much effort the student put in and you know if they're borderline in their grade if they're watching the video the videos you know the day before I'm not going to have a lot of sympathy for them but they put in a lot of effort over time I, I think that I mean this is definitely more useful than the learning UW but it well, this is one of the things that um, when Catherine Arnett Smith talked about Canvas, one of the things she really had some issues with the amount of data that they showed in their default thing. But one of the things that was nice was the students had this view and instructors as well of how much time they spent on each thing and relative to the rest of the class average. So that was kind of an interesting, then the students could sort of pace themselves. Um, and you can, of course, have a work slow down and everybody goes down. But. So Lisa, I, I agree with exactly what you're saying. In fact, I use, uh, you talked about the D2L analytics. You can go into like user progress or something and go in there. So for example, uh, in one class that I teach, uh, students can take three quizzes and the quizzes look like the exams. And so I always say, take all three quizzes because it's practice for the exams, blah, 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 blah. Well, I go in there and one student Oh, I'm taking the quizzes. Well, I look, you know, same thing. Do 11.59 on Friday night. She's taking the first one at 11.10. She's taking the second one at 11.17. She's taking the third. So that's not exactly what I meant by it. <laughs> but, but it gives you that type of information. And to be able to say, well, let's see. And then have it create a, pull up a visualization where it will show you over a, a period of time. And you can say, okay, that's interesting. What about this? So uh, the, the, in my mind, the next phase, and, and this kind of goes along with what Elaine is saying, is to have an interface where you can say, here's the data I want. Show me some of these types of things. And then to go beyond that to say, well, now I want to do an ANOVA, or I want to do a t-test, or I really want to kind of dig into this. Give this to me in some type of table that I can drop into SPSS or, uh, you know, or R or whatever it is that I'm using to do uh, these type of analysis. I wouldn't, I wouldn't build that into the system, but I would like to be able to have a system that says, okay, Give me a data dump uh, and format it so that I can put it into R. That, again, would be really useful if I were doing design-based research. But. Well, I, I only learned, you do, last time I checked, it wasn't able, doesn't allow you to see every single thing. Right. It just tells you, like, the last one. See, I agree. And you ought to be able to query it and say, yeah, show me all of this. Yeah. Right. And then have it create a, a, a one-page graphic. Uh, that would compare the student against over a couple weeks or compare three or four students or against an exemplar. You should be able to, all this data is there, all you have to do is ask. Right. And, and I, so we need a mechanism, I think that we need an interface that allows you to ask whatever questions you want and it creates the data. But at least gives you a high level visualization and gives you the opportunity to drill into even that a little bit more and do some comparisons. You know, do you want to run, run a t-test to say, oh, this is really a significant difference or not? Yeah, and I have, I have been using the tool also to kind of um, get a sense of um, the progress of students that have lower grades that my co-instructors may want to, you know, curve a little bit. And I'm trying to use this to argue, no, these students really aren't putting in the work. They should not get higher grades based on what I see. But if it was a little more user-friendly, I think I could... Um, make my argument a little easier. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree with you completely. And also, so the timestamp on here on the table, is that like the first view or is that the last? Do you guys know? I don't know. It's really, a lot of what you see here is a proof of concept. It's that it can do it. Then we'll go in, and, and the next step would be to go in and, and uh, say, now here's exactly what we want it to do. Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, from the instructor point of view, it's a great system to, you know, collect the data. But from the student point of view, I wouldn't like it too much. You wouldn't like it as a student? Because yeah, because, well, s for example, this um, information is very connected to my use of a computer mm -hmm. all the time. But if I like to spend 10 hours just this paper and a pencil and doesn't account for this, 
And for example, if I, you know, it's kind of doesn't connect my progress to what I really did. Yeah, and that's that. I, I'm kind of glad you say that because I talk to my, I, I teach kids that are going to be teachers. Okay, and what I say all the time is, as teachers, all we do is make inferences about what our students know. Okay. How do we make better inferences? We gather better data. How do we gather better data? We ask better questions. But we're constrained to what that tool itself will allow you to do. So you could say, oh yeah, I watched this video 30 times, but uh, what does that mean? Did you just turn the video on and then go in the living room, you know, kitchen to do the dishes? We don't really know that they watched the video. We just know that they accessed it. We accessed it this many of times. And, and even if you say, well, you know, if it would tell me how long they were in that session, that would give me some more data, but we don't really know what they were doing in those 30, even in those 30 minutes. So uh, that's part of the, that's part of whether you're using technology or not. That's kind of the mystery or the challenge of teaching is to be able to, how do we ask the best questions? How do we assign the very best task we can so that we can get the very best data so that we can make the very best inferences about what teachers know. I, I, don't, know, I don't know about higher ed, but I know, can tell you in K-12, as a principal, when I would point at my teachers and say, okay, you gave this kid a B minus, will you guarantee that this kid can do B minus work on everything they ever do? I would never, I could never find a teacher that would take that. You know, I'm just saying, well, this is what I know based on what they did for me, okay? Well, is that good enough so that you would say that if they're working for somebody else? No, I would never say that because there are too many factors and things like that. Well, that's ultimately what we should be striving for when we do evaluations or assessments. We should be able to ask the data. And, and you're right, the computer only captures a limited amount of what people do know. And that's the problem with, you know, like lurkers. Everybody knows the lurker example where people never participate and yet they take the test and they blow the ceiling off it, you know. Okay, so the computer didn't tell me much about that particular person. So I want to respect your time. We have two minutes left, but in the last two minutes, um, in addition to please filling out your yellow sheets to help us make this better, I'd like to invite James up as a learning analytics person and have him speak a little bit about I'll get a tab here with your oh, slides I, as well. Exactly. Yeah, so the, about like some said, of the other options available. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Very quickly yeah. tell you, this yeah. is yeah. part yeah. of what we call the UW System Learning Analytics Tool Chest. And we actually currently have three tools that we are piloting. This one is specific pulling data in from the course. The other two, this is called Analytics and Recommendation, and it's uh, also a plugin that you can, you can put into D2L. And what it does is it takes your current course and it compares your students' activities in that current course to a historical course, and then it compares them to specific profiles of an A student, A, B student, C student, et cetera, to give you some sense for how much are they participating compared to previous students in this class, and it will then predict a grade based on that participation. Um, in addition, this one also has a, and I'll show you a screenshot here. Um, this one also has a student-facing interface. So it's for you as the instructor, but the student can also go in there. It won't show them anybody's data but their own, but it will give them some sense of what their participation is. So this is what they can, they can look at. It'll show their current participation by, there's activity types, and then there's uh, specific activities, and it will compare them to uh, show them. So here you go. Here's where, where you, your uh, participation is. Here's where historical A or AB or whatever. And then it will, uh, for you as an as a instructor, it will say, based on that, this is what grade we predict they will get as a way to kind of help you have an early alert for students who might be struggling. Uh, study pattern is uh, the third one. And this one is actually uh, LMS agnostic. So you can use it for anything. We have some people piloting. Basically, it's kind of like a Fitbit for education. Um, students track the time that they spend in your class, and then they rate how productive it is by category or activity. And then that gets all aggregated for you, the instructor. You don't get to see any individual student's data, but it will aggregate all of it. It will tell you how many hours logged, and then it will give you various analytics, productivity by hour of day, by day of week, by activity. And then you can also control, so you can look at for the whole semester, you can look at just for a week or something along those lines. Uh, and then again, there's, there's more charts that will kind of help you know how are your students doing. And, and you can even get it specific enough that if you want to know how they rated a specific class, if you had a specific lecture that you were worried about, you can narrow the timeline and see what students said about that specific lecture. But anyways, I know we're, we're out of time. 
But if you are interested in any of these tools, um, you can come talk to me. Also, there are upcoming activities. Uh, there's one Tuesday, April 5th, there's an LTDC virtual showcase where we will talk about these three tools. On Wednesday, May 18th, we're going to do a, a whole teaching and learning symposium session on these three tools. And then that next Thursday morning, we'll have a poster uh, here on campus. So. Are those dates posted someplace? We will put these on the um, web page, on the session page for the Active Teaching Lab for this session, along with the website for the learning analytics tools available in D2L and Moodle. Thank you. So those will be on the, in the takeaways section 